Why I keep my car? Some of you know that my car was slightly wrecked a couple of months ago. I'm not going to point blame. Let's just say that a small pole won it from my passenger side. And even though it would be a costly repair, I can do that stuff myself. I come from a family of car mechanics and painters. But let's kick this video off differently. If you don't have enough evidence, you shouldn't be too confident about certain claims. And that's where I generally see doubt as a good thing. I've noticed that people tend to have a simplistic view of the future. If only we implement all renewables, all will be well. If only we replace all fossil fueled cars with hydrogen or battery cars, all will be well. But I'm not so simplistic or naive to think that these proposed solutions are in any way, shape or form feasible. Neither would I say that we have to start doing 100% nuclear today. Naturally, I would think it would be the most feasible of all the all-in ideas. But again, I'm not so simplistic or naive to presume that it will be easy to do such a thing. Although, I do think that it is technically feasible. Why am I making a video about my 13 year old car? I own a Volkswagen, a pretty cheap one, with a 1.6 liter engine that is pretty noisy, but it gets a reasonable gas mileage. Its emissions, however, are about 160 grams of CO2 per kilometer. A couple of years ago, I thought that replacing it with an electric car would be the best way to go. I would be able to cut my emissions significantly, but doubt kept nagging at me. And I researched a lot of stuff. And it turned out that things are a lot more nuanced than I initially thought. It does not logically follow that an electric car has less emissions than a gasoline power car. As it turns out, any car you buy comes out of the dealership with a big carbon footprint. The materials for it had to be mined, purified, and then the parts had to be manufactured. A lot of heat and transportation were required to build that car. There's about 1 billion cars on the road today. Let's presume that each car costs an average of $15,000. The carbon footprint seems to be about half a ton per $1,000. So those $15,000 cars have a 7.5 ton carbon dioxide footprint before it ever transported any humans. BEVs come in at much higher costs. Consider the Nissan LEAF, one of the most popular BEVs out there. The LEAF has an in-dealership carbon footprint of roughly 12.5 tons of carbon dioxide. Suppose we build 1 billion LEAFs tomorrow and replace all cars overnight we'd be raking in another 12.5 billion tons of carbon dioxide without any of them ever have been on the street. Now, I'm not necessarily dissing on BEVs. Regular cars have the same problem. What I want to do is help you become conscious about the fact that a car has costs, even if it doesn't drive. If you need a new one, consider buying a BEV or a hybrid if you want. Well, I would be supportive of that. But make sure it's cheap. And if it's still a gasoline guzzler, make sure it has a really good gas mileage. Also, try more alternative transportation modes, if available to you. Take the bus, metro or train. Or bike more, like I do. And since I'm not wealthy enough to buy a new BEV, or any other car for that matter, I keep and maintain my own car. During the video, you have seen me changing the brake discs and the brake pads. Ever since, I drove about 500 kilometers. Luckily, nothing bad happened. 
I'm still here. I want to keep my car in top order, so I spend some money on it regularly. Who knows, I might even decide to put a more economic engine in there in the future. I can actually do that, because I used to do the opposite. I used to put big engines in small cars and make them go fast. But now I'm more conscious about the environment. I would love to have a newer car, but only if it is really light can seat four people, go a long way with as low emissions as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you all for watching and have a nice day.